Hey YouTubers! My name is Zoe and welcome to my channel All About Wildlife. Today we're going to be talking about one of the slyest and one of my favorite animals in the animal kingdom, foxes. Now before we get started, I have a question for all of you. Are foxes more closely related to cats or to dogs? We'll answer this question at the end of the video. But for now, let's get started. There are five different species of foxes in North America. The first one up is the kit fox. The kit fox lives from Mexico to Oregon. From their nose to their tail, they can grow anywhere between two to three feet long. They stand about one foot tall and can weigh up to five pounds. They are the smallest fox out of all the foxes in North America. Their fur is a pale yellowish color with some gray. Their throats and bellies are white colored. They have a fluffy tail with a black tip at the end. They also have very large ears. The large ears help them with temperature control because they mostly live in the hot deserts. Their large ears can also help them with hunting. They hunt mostly at night and they hunt for small rodents. Mostly they like to hunt kangaroo mice. They can give birth between three to five pups in the months of February to March. Both parents will protect the pups from predators. Their main predator is the coyote. Next up is the swift fox. The swift fox lives from North Texas to Montana. From their nose to their tail, they can grow to be anywhere between two to three feet long. They can stand about one foot tall and can weigh up to six pounds. Their fur is a pale yellowish color with some gray. Their throats and bellies are white and their tail has a black tip at the end. They hunt mostly at night and eat small rodents and insects. You might be thinking the swift fox sounds a lot like the kit fox. What's the difference? Well, the main difference is where they live. Some of the smaller differences is that the swift fox tends to be a little bit bigger and has smaller ears. The kit fox also has dark spots on the side of its muzzle and the muzzle tends to be a little bit smaller. The swift fox can give birth between four to five pups in the months of April to May. Both the parents will protect the pups from predators such as coyotes. The third fox is the Arctic fox. The Arctic fox lives from northeastern Canada to western Alaska. From their nose to their tail, they can grow anywhere between two to three and a half feet long. They stand about one foot tall and weigh anywhere between five to 15 pounds, depending on the time of year. They have a short muzzle and short legs. They have extra fur on the bottom of their feet to help them in the snow. Their ears tend to be short and round, and they have a thick furry coat. In the winter time, their coat will be white and becomes gray or black in the summer. They hunt at night and will hunt during daylight hours in the summertime. They eat small rodents, birds, and bird eggs. Between the months of April and May, they can give birth between six to 10 pups, but there has been reports of giving birth up to 25 pups. The reason they have so many is because most of the pups can't make it through the hard winters. Both parents will take care of the pups and protect them from polar bears, wolves, coyotes, and large birds. The fourth fox is the red fox. The red fox is the most diverse fox out of all the foxes. They live in all of North America, except for Mexico, Southern California, and Arizona. From their nose to their tail, they could grow anywhere between two to three feet long. They stand about one and a half feet tall and can weigh anywhere between eight to 15 pounds. They got their name, Red Fox, from their coats. They also can have black or gray coats. They have long black bushy tails with a white tip at the end. Their throats and bellies are also white. They have long legs with black stockings and black on the back of their ears. They hunt mostly at night and will hunt during daylight hours too. They hunt mostly rodents, birds, and they'll also eat berries. These foxes are notorious for getting into people's gardens and eating grapes, blueberries, raspberries, and all kinds of vegetation. During the winter times, they use their ears to listen for sounds of small rodents burrowing in the snow. They'll jump high into the air and dive into the snow to get to them. Sometimes the snow is just a little too deep. 
They give birth between one to seven pups during the months of March and May. Both parents will protect their pups from bears, wolves, and coyotes. Finally, we have our fifth fox, the gray fox. Now before I get started, I want to point out that the Latin name is different from all the other foxes' Latin names. All the foxes have the Latin name Vulpus, but the gray fox has the Latin name Orosion. The reason is that the gray fox is a little different than the other foxes. If you look at footprints left behind from a fox, you'll see where the claws dig into the ground. But if you look at the tracks left behind by a gray fox, you might not see the claws because they are the only fox that can retract their claws, much like a cat. Also like cats, gray foxes are great at climbing trees. The other foxes can't climb trees. They might be able to jump on a low branch, but the gray fox can actually climb up a tree. And that's why they have a different Latin name. Okay, on to the gray fox. The gray fox lives from eastern United States to Mexico. From their nose to their tail, they can grow anywhere between two and a half to three and a half feet long. They stand about one foot tall and can weigh anywhere between seven to 15 pounds. They have a gray furry back, necks, and ears. They have yellowish orange legs. Their bellies and throats are white, while they have black at the tip of their tail. They hunt mostly at night. They eat small mammals, insects, and fruit. They even climb up trees to get to the fruit and trees. They can give birth anywhere between one to seven pups, born between the months of March and May. Both parents will protect the pups from predators, such as coyotes. And that's it for the foxes in North America. Did you get a chance to think about the question from before? Are foxes more closely related to cats or to dogs? If you said dogs, you'd be correct. Both foxes and dogs are part of the canid family. They are also related to wolves, coyotes, and jackals. Even though they are a lot like our furry friends, foxes do not make great pets. These creatures are best outside in their natural habitat. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. And if you have any questions or you want me to talk about another animal, let me know in the comments below. And I hope to see you next time.